<laughs> yeah, that's a smile. Hi. I know, and we're growing like a weed. We got too tall for our six-month clothes. The last time I saw him, he was still a little baby. Now he's not. I mean, he is like Because it's been a couple months since I've been up by you. I know, it's weird. (laughs) Hi, little baby. Hi. I love you. Please don't pull on my earbuds. Thank you. Ooh, lights. That's going to hurt if you yank them out of my ears. I'm just saying. That's why I gave you the glowy. Ooh, lights. (laughs) He just wants to be involved. Oh, well, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like uh, whenever you see people's people playing games with like their kids or their younger siblings, and you just give them the controller that's not he just plugged wants in. Wants to be involved with the show. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he just wants to be involved. That's okay. You're the executive producer. Yep, because you got promoted the last time that you were on the podcast. So I am Ash, and I'm Elle, and our executive producer is joining us in the studio today. That is true, because he decided not to take a nap anymore right when we were going to record. It happens. That's quality control. Gotta, I know, quality control. He has to oversee the production, right? Yes, as, that is his job as executive producer. So we are Lovey Cosplay. Oh, yeah, and this is shit cosplayers say. We're pretty sure it is. Pretty sure. We're pretty and sure. And it's October. It is October. It's poopy season. I know. I feel like this year has just flown by. It it has. It very much has. Because when this airs, the day before, I'll have done my Oogie Boogie photo shoot. I'm going to assume it was fabulous. Um, we'll see. <laughs> She's almost done. She's going to hopefully be done. Well, not done done, but like wearable right. this weekend. This is one of those costumes that like is never fully done. There's always other things you can keep doing. I feel like we do that with a lot of our costumes where we're like, just one more thing, just one more thing. But as far as getting her wearable for this shoot and then another shoot I have, and then it was unanimously decided that she has to come to Fusion, um, she should be done enough for those three things. So It's all good. It'll be a good time. Ooh, the executive producer threw his headphones across the room. <laughs> Are you not happy with the fact that it's going to be done done? He says that or that's do you want not it done acceptable. done now? Or you want it done done now? Unacceptable <laughs> to our executive producer. Everybody's a critic. <laughs> Maybe he's just mad that he's not coming with to supervise the live show at Fusion. Um, maybe, but I'm sorry. It's you're too young for that, sir. Yeah, sorry, friend. We cannot bring you with. <laughs> nope, you do not have a state issued or government issued ID. That's right. You are not vaccinated, friend. You can date of come. birth. Also that. <laughs> yeah, also we, that. We do know when our live show is, though, which is exciting. Yes. It will be Saturday evening at 11 p.m. at Anime Fusion. 11 until 12.30. That's right. Yeah, we're just going to jump right into it. That's right. We sure are. We're going to see if we're still awake at 11 p.m. to do our show because we're old and haven't done this in eons. It'll be fine. It's all good. It'll be fine. It'll be good. I'm excited to see people. That'll be fun. That'll be great. It'll be good. As of now, we still have not heard anything from C2E2. I'm hoping by the time this airs, we will have. But they um, extended the date for panel submissions, which then extended the finalized dates by like two plus weeks. So Yes, because originally they were due on September 3rd and you were supposed to hear back within two weeks. So by the 17th, but then they extended their panel deadline until the 17th. Which means it pushes it back to like October 2nd before we might hear something. But of course, we're both stalking the email constantly to see if there's been an update yet. I just want to know, one, if any of them got taken and two, how many, because that influences anything else we can do at C2E2. Yes. And I want to know if we need to go like buy a badge if we still want to go. Yes, also that. (laughs) But it's more like I can't decide anything else that we want to do at the con until we know 
how many panels, if any, got picked up, so... Well, it's kind of hard to plan the rest of the weekend until we get that information, so... It very much is. But, hopefully, by the time that this airs, we will have known for, like, a week. (laughs) Hopefully we'll know, and then we'll be able to let all of you know when they let us let people know. Um, I would assume by now Fusion would have their schedule out, so... Oh, yeah, because by the time that this airs, it's going to be like two weeks before the con, so. That's right. We have a con in like a month. It's weird. I'm really excited to con. I know. We went from like, oh, we don't need to take all of Friday off to being like, no, we do. We do. <laughs> we need to be at con. We need more con in our the- life. I want to go do the thing. <laughs> so we're actually going to be there most of the day on Friday after all. I mean, it's still a six hour drive for us, so we still won't get there till the afternoon. But. It does mean I can wear both Ning Wong and Oogie Boogie at Fusion, which is exciting. I see he agrees. Yes, he does. He, he thinks totally that's agrees. exciting. He thinks that's a great plan. Yes, although, so Ning Wong, which I'm going to do some. I'm sorry, do you have an opinion on this first? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's very chatty today. Yes. So I'm hoping to do some video reviews of Ning Wong because one of the things I wish I could have found when I was looking to buy her was more information on what the costume would have been like. Because there are some really strange things about this costume that I feel like people need to know about because she should have been big on me and she is not. I've never had a costume be almost too small in my hips. I don't have hips. So you do not have hips. No, but you know what the weirdest fit is? Your, hip, on your hips don't lie, so. The, the weirdest fit on this costume is the shorts. Because from front to back, the shorts are too short. Huh. Yeah. Huh. So I'm going to have to, like, go in underneath and extend them out. Because they're too short from front to back. I've never had this in a pair of pants in my entire life. But they are not big enough from Surprise. front to back. <laughs> I know, I'm going to have to put, like, a gusset in to, like, make them bigger. Which, the listing did say the shorts run really small, but I didn't expect it that way. I expected it in the waist. Which, um, you want to know what's really funny about these shorts? Please tell me. They're toddler pants. <gasps> toddler pants? They are. They have the elastic in the back. <laughs> I love it. So, like, they fit fine in the waist, but, like, I can't really, like, I'm afraid I'm going to sit down and split them, like, underneath, because they're not quite long enough. It's, I, this is never a thing. I mean, I've experienced this in, like, swimsuits before, where, like, you put a swimsuit on and you can tell it's not long enough, but not yeah. in, like, shorts. Hmm. It's it's very strange. I'm going to have to, like, jury-rig something together. Eventually, I'm going to remake these shorts because they're kind of awful. But, I mean, for what I paid, the costume's pretty fabulous. Yeah. Because I only paid, I think, total with shipping and with the wig, like, 160 I couldn't buy, like, the base fabric for her for $160. I mean, I feel like a lot of things that you buy for finished costume pieces are kind of like that, though. Yeah, because the materials are so much less expensive overseas because a lot of the materials are made overseas. But, you know, for what I I paid, I mean, the fabric is relatively decent. Some of it's not what I would have picked, but, you know, I have a weird thing about polyester sometimes. But, you know, some, the, the accessories need some work. Some of the, some, so they did some weird things. Like, okay. she's got, like, these claw nails on a couple fingers, right? They look kind of like the, um, they remind me of, like, the Thai dancing nails okay. a little bit. But they're, they're more like, like, the filigree nails we used for, like, barrel and nail, but longer. Uh-huh. Um, they sent glitter fabric for those. Ew. Yeah, like, glitter triangles. To st- mm. it, it's so weird. It's bizarre. And then, like, she's got, like, a little piece of jewelry like like a brooch and that's all fabric instead of being like plastic like the other brooches that they sent so there's just some weird stuff where i'm like that's they an do odd that for choice. other things the the brooch that i got 
with my peach costume is also it's like one of those buttons yeah. except it's covered in fabric. Yeah, it's just it's we- it was weird. It's like it's flat and it's an embroidered diamond instead of being like an actual jewelry piece. Uh-huh. But then like the vision's really well done. Yeah, my vision. I got a vision from I think it might have been Mick Costumes and it was really good. So like some of the accessories need some like um some of them they just need some shading and like maybe a little bit of repainting because they're that like costume gold you know like that yellow gold and i'm just like no no let's not do that color that's an icky color (laughs) but like it's little tiny things like her hair piece isn't bad it's not great but it's like a lot of the accessories they're not great but they're not bad bases to try to make them a little bit better that's a fair assessment. Yeah, yeah. like you have to do a video. Yeah, I'll do a couple TikToks of like what she looks like because Ganyu's on her way too now. So um, hopefully by our winter con that we have not yet named, Ganyu will be available. Um, that would be nice since there'll probably be snow in that time of the year. <laughs> he he agrees. Yeah. <laughs> He's he's going to tell us about Overall, it. Overall, I don't have to do... I haven't taken the wig out of the bag yet. I'm a little nervous. Because um, that's got... She's got like this big bun thing, and I have no idea what that's going to look like when I yeah. pull this wig out. But I've seen people with the same costume I got, and I'm going to guess probably the same wig um, all over Instagram recently, because everybody just got theirs. Um, right. Everything looks good in photos, and she that's what she is. She's a... Do I look good in photos and like on the con floor kind of costume she's not meant to be judged for like a contest so who cares right like um but yeah yeah, there's this weird like the chest is big but the hips are tiny the tights are massive (laughs) so eventually i'm gonna have to take some dance tights and just like airbrush the little symbol on the side at some point because the tights are huge which i'm just like why are these so big (laughs) In comparison and then the shorts are every- so small. I know. And like her <laughs> gloves are way too big. So I have to take mm-hmm. those in. Um, They're really baggy. But then like in like the arm bands are a little baggy. But that's okay. That's not a huge deal. Um, They did put in these cool like straps attached to her arm bands that you button to the dress to keep them in that's place. Nice. Which was kind of cool because I was going to do that anyway to them and they'd already done it. So like, I mean, for the most part, it's well... It's well made. It looks nice. It's... Yeah, he agrees. <laughs> Do you want a Genshin costume, executive producer? I could just order him one of the like pet costumes. Right? He could be venti. <laughs> yeah. He'd be real cute. Hi. Do you want to be venti? Hi. You and Peppy could match. Yeah. Because Wigwig's the... cat, Peppy, has a venti costume. Match the Peppy cat. You could match Peppy cat. It's a little cape and a little hat. It'd be super cute. So your your peach costume came? Yes. So I I want to do a little modifying to it. So the tracksuit that I ordered to go underneath the tennis dress is, it's a little baggy in a lot of areas. Um, So I need to, especially in the leggings, I need to take the leggings in because um, they look kind of like joggers at the moment. And then I haven't decided if I'm keeping the gloves that I got, just they're a little more like silvery and less white as I was expecting. And then the cut on the tennis dress is actually fine for the tennis dress, but I think it looks a little funny with the jacket on underneath of it. So I might take it in and go to like Joanne's because of course that's my only fabric store and see if I can find a cotton in a close enough color to just make like an extra piece to go over Mm -hmm. where like the shoulder is. Um, because it's cut really tight, like really narrow at the top of the shoulder. And I just kind of want to extend that out a little bit or maybe even get like some faux fur or something and put it there. That would be cute because it's the Um, skate, it's the skating outfit. So yeah, it's supposed to be the winter games outfit is kind of what I was going for just because of the time of the year and it gets down, you know, into like the fifties when it's dark out here right now. And by the end of October, I mean, we could have snow, hypothetically, so... I mean, we have many times on Halloween. We have. Please see episode two. <laughs> yeah. I got some wig supplies in for some things that I want to do. Um, I would. My goal is to get one of them done by 
C2E2, and then the other one done by Unnamed WinterCon. So that's kind of my piecing together plan. That, does and, that mean I need to find stuff for Daisy by by those times? Oh, I mean, if you want to. Um, my <laughs> other my other current plans are a little more buy-y and less um, makey because I want. I'm thinking for fusion. I've narrowed it down. I think Friday I'm gonna do something comfy like Kigu with wig. Yeah. So I just need to decide what Kigu I want to buy, what wig I want to pair with it. So it'll probably be like either my Usagi um, Princess Lady or Ladybug wigs with either a cat or like a unicorn. That's cute. Or a bunny, Kigu. Or a bunny, because you can Any do Usagi. Of yeah. Any of those would, would work, um, just depending on what Kigu I happen to find that I like and which wig I feel like dragging with me to Minnesota and wearing for a couple hours on Friday. And then I'm I'm seriously leaning towards Molgoth on Saturday. Um, either like in character as like Hotaru, because that could be super cute, especially if I get like the the earrings mm-hmm. with the that she wears, or um shock because everybody loves the nightmare before Christmas. I mean, considering I'm wearing Oogie, my vote yeah. is for shock, obviously. Because well, then and we I also sort just, of match. And I, I think it really, would be really fun to do lock at some point. So, Well, and if you do lock as a mall goth, then we could find somebody to do barrel as right? a mall goth and then take pictures together. It can be Hot Topic, late 90s, mall goth. I know, right? <laughs> that would be adorable. <laughs> um, I think it would be super fun. Well, and they do like a goth meetup like once or twice a year in our area just for like photos. And then we One just, of the photographers have have does the, it. The Halloween masks. Which well, they and sell Hot Topic those. sells so just... Hot Topic sells those, yeah, like specific masks, yeah. And I thought about just buying it to be like, yes, I want that. Um, I mean, I think that would be really cute because I would totally do lock at some point. That I would found be a adorable. cute little like purple dress with black lace skulls on it. <laughs> That's cute. I know. Because, oh, and no, then, I would have to buy Hot Topic red plaid pants. Oh, no. Oh, no. How, How terrible. <laughs> Not that I didn't wear those all the time before anyway and would probably still wear them now. Well, you know. <laughs> if I had ones that fit, but I don't. <laughs> so, yeah, that's been my Amazon binging the last couple days is just kind of scoping out all that fun stuff. And I'm like, this looks ridiculously comfortable to wear. Right. Well, because yes. the hard part about Fusion is we don't have a hotel room. So yes, changing is going to be a big adventure for getting into Ning Wong. Um, sometimes they have a changing booth in the cosplay room. And if I get lucky enough that it's available, I can throw her on in there. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do the like bathroom changing thing to at least get her dress on and then get the rest of it on like outside of a stall. And oh, she's yeah. not the easiest to put on, so this could be an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> she She's kind of difficult to get into. <laughs> and she's a lot of pieces, so I'm not quite sure how well that's going to go. Because I'm also not sitting in her in a car for six hours. I would probably split the dress. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a terrible, yeah, that terrible it, plan. She just fits, so there would be a good chance that I would, like, pop a seam. Well, and also, we have to go to the Wagon Wheel restaurant, and That's you don't right. want to eat in that. <laughs> I don't want to eat in it. I don't know that there's enough room in Ning Wong for me to eat while I am wearing her. <laughs> like, she has no stretch. She's all satin. So, like, yeah. I don't think I can eat while dressed as Ning Wong. Like, we're going to get there. I'm going to put her on. I'm going to do a photo shoot, and she's going to come off. <laughs> she's there not a, She is not a, like, all-day con kind of costume. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not comfortable at all. Like, there's there's no comfort in that costume. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, she's fabulous and I love her, but she's definitely not an all-day costume. Yeah. I mean, maybe as I start making some adjustments to her, she can be, but... um, But for now. <laughs> but for now, with the time that I have available, yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. Yep. That, that's the plan. Well, We're I'm going to just... be wearing comfortable clothes so I can handle you if necessary. <laughs> right? Because I'm going to be a needy, needy queen of everything. 
<laughs> the, the needy Which queen sounds like of Wewa. <laughs> that just sounds like Ning Wong. You're just being in character. And I need all your Mora. Please and thank you. Um, speaking of in character, so I had pop across my memories today when we went to go see Two Heroes. Yes! Like three years ago. Yes! And there was this really long Facebook chain post that I had going on where I... I posted a picture of me and Mama Midoriya, and then I posted a picture of Elle as Izuku driving yes! us to the movie theater, and then when we got popcorn, and then <laughs> when somebody took our photo together, and then a photo with our friend Pink Hamster, our mom and son Mina. date. Yeah, we had a mother mother son date to go watch My Hero Academia: Two Heroes at a local movie theater. That's and right. It was a it was a good time. And everybody got a kick of us, like, posting in character on my Facebook page. It was a good time. <laughs> so, yeah, that came across my feed this morning and made me really happy. Well, soon we can cosplay in person again. I know. You just have to, at some point, pick your, your Genshin character so you can Genshin it up. Yes, one or more. There's just so oh. many choices, it's hard. There are a lot of choices. So is- I did order some stuff um, for Beto. Yeah. But I don't have any like due date currently in mind right. for that. I've ordered some random pieces of it, but it's it's going to be one of those, let's just see how it goes things. Right. If, when all the pieces that are needed are aligned, then yes. Beto can occur. <laughs> then Beto can occur. I mean, they put Beto with Ning Wong all the time, so... They they have a love hate relationship with each other. <laughs> um, that's why I originally decided to to cosplay her is because I read that in a Wikipedia article. <laughs> oh, good because the Raiden Shogun and Beto also have um conflicts. <laughs> good, good. So it'll work out well. Because yes, I also need to be the Raiden Shogun who I guess isn't Ball. I haven't gotten this far yet, so. Oh, I don't know. It's been a bit since I've been able to play Genshin, so yes. it's sad. You know. Well, now that we've babbled for like yeah. a really long time, I feel like we should actually I mean, I think get this into episode today's episode. It's kind of funny because we haven't been making things. But the conversations come up a lot online it recently. Does. It does, because people are starting to get back into making things and getting ready for competitions and um you know the process of the mock-up is sometimes left in the wind when you are con crunching to try to get your things done yep i'm not a great example because i used my mock-up for oogie to become oogie <laughs> so. i mean sometimes that happens I mean, it's simply because I used muslin to make Oogie Boogie. So once I got the right thing put together, I just used it as the costume. But that's like a weird hybrid situation. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's probably not not the norm for you to be. Well, and I definitely used to be one of those people that it was like, um, F mock-ups, I'm not doing it. Like, this takes too much time. Like... Wouldn't and do then you them. Learned. I have <laughs> learned because it takes me a lot less time when I do a mock up and a lot less money. So, for those of you that are unaware, a mock up is essentially like a test version of your costume. It's typically going to be made out of similar materials, but not your actual materials. You really just want something with like a similar, like, weight and what i would refer to as pissiness level <laughs> um weight drape pissiness level something that's just like similar in fabric quality but is usually going to be a lot cheaper because mistakes do happen and you're probably going to butcher it a lot which is fine but this is frequently going to turn in what you're going to use as your final pattern or You'll keep track of the changes that you made from your original pattern if you started with one and then can go ahead and just replicate those. For some weird reason, a lot of people think that 
mock-ups are a sign of weakness or like Elle said we used to think they were kind of unnecessary because they take a long time but I mean I think the weakness part comes from like I have a feeling a lot of people have this idea that the big cosplayers don't do them where you even seen like can we cosplay do them in her videos where she does like like all those armor maps that she does beforehand and then all those templates that's all mock up <laughs> yeah yeah it's all the mock up yeah like all of those things are part of her mock up process well and i think too a lot of people see like you said like professional content creators constantly putting out new costumes and they don't see all of the behind the scenes stuff so they see these tutorials that say hey this is how you do this or hey here's this pattern for this and they don't necessarily realize that there's a process that has to go on prior to that finished template being created um that has to be checked and tweaked and checked and tweaked and checked and tweaked up i mean until it's done. So a lot of cosplayers will go through multiple stages of mock-ups. Um, if you've done the same shape frequently enough, you might not have to go through as many. Or you might happen to have like a build block based on your specific body type. But like even professional tailors are going to go through at least two to three fittings for clients. Like a if you get a bespoke suit, which is what everybody thinks of when they talk about professional tailoring, like a custom fitted, custom made, like three piece suit, it takes between like 50 to 70 hours for these people that do this full time as their job and a minimum of like two to three fittings just to get like a perfect fit. So I don't know why hobbyists think that for whatever reason that they're not going to go through the same steps or that it's bad for them to do that i think some of it is too a lot of people don't leave themselves enough time to go through all the steps because con crunch con crunch and so when you're con crunching you're not necessarily leaving yourself enough time to go through as many steps of mock-up as you probably need to in order to get that crisp fit or those exact details because you're in a hurry. Yeah, and as we all know, when we rush through things, mistakes are made. Skips ours. Our steps are skipped. <laughs> well, and the other thing with our professional cosplayers like Kinpatsu or Kamui, they do this all day, every day, all the time. So no, they probably don't need as many mock-ups as other people do. They probably have other templates that are similar that they can build off of and work through so anyone who's been doing this consistently for a long period of time may not need as many but if you ask most of the big cosplayers they're going to tell you they at least did one or two and i would say we probably do at least three or four yeah just depending on what the shape is i mean oogie didn't need a lot because her shape is not fitted so the more fitted a garment, the more mock-ups you're going to end up needing, in most cases. But Oogie was just kind of like a roundabout shape needs to be about X. Right. So I only really had to do one, because there really wasn't a lot of wiggle room for me to make a mistake. Like, she's oversized sack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Check. but, oh my god, I don't want to count how many mock-ups went into barrel. Right. Barrel had so many mock-ups i she was probably close to like 10 we just kept redoing her because it wasn't working and i even yeah. used a commercial pattern as a base for her and it still wasn't yeah. working like that's how she ended up being two pieces because we kept trying to make her one piece and it just was not work. like the mock-ups weren't working but had i just jumped straight into my fabric I would have wasted so much fabric. So much fabric. Like, like you, you would have had to order more even though you overbuy. I, I, well, I've never overbought more than I did for Hinoto. Hinoto was a, <laughs> a situation of a overbuying. A situation. But even her, who isn't a fitted garment at all, had multiple mock-ups before 
I went to ahead and put her together. Yeah. And she's not fitted at all. Um, you know. I, Harley didn't have too many, oddly enough. But the corset pattern that I used for Harley was already modified from barrel. And so I didn't have to do that part of the work. Yes, because we had already done it with another garment. Because I do highly recommend keeping your mock-ups because you never know when you're going to want to take one and use it for something else. That has saved me so much time. Well, and another thing that we've noticed, too, is if you find a particular pattern for a particular area of your body that you like, keep it. Like, Elle has her favorite sleeve that she just... I lost my favorite sleeve. You lost your favorite sleeve? It's, oh, that's a travesty. It's somewhere in the horror that is my craft room right now. I, well, some, I did. somewhere there is a favorite sleeve, so and I, we've used it so many times. I did. It used to be pinned to my board and has fallen off. I found a second one, and it's not, it's not the same, though. That sleeve has carried me through so many costumes, and I'm really sad that I, I can't find it. Right now, I have a hard time conceptualizing the basic shape of a sleeve, and so I'll use this like basic pattern, and then I'll draw in addition to it to get what I want. Um, but it's it's missing, and I'm sad. <laughs> that is really sad. But like the corset pattern that we used, um, that we first built, what I now use for the corset patterns was one of Yaya Han's, and we found that that pattern, for the most part, worked well. We had to make some adjustments. Um, but the adjusted version of that pattern has worked really well for multiple costumes, so I just keep reusing that adjusted pattern. Yeah. Well, and I do think one of our friends brought up KB Cosplay um, made a comment about how younger cosplayers in general experience a different level of social media pressure, which is also something we had discussed in our episode on... Um, Imposter Syndrome? Yes, our episode on imposter syndrome with the professors about how those that have us that have been doing this for a long time don't have as much social media pressure because we didn't have as much social media back in the day when we were first starting out as cosplaying. So now this hobby that we have has kind of evolved and you know how we grew up in it is not necessarily how some of the younger cosplayers have grown up in it. And so there's different perceived expectations for what is cosplay and how do you do cosplay yeah a lot of the younger cosplayers feel this pressure to be constantly turning over new costumes yeah and new social media content exactly because that's part of turning over new social media content is to constantly have new costumes um, I do see a big trend in closet cosplay because of that, and it is actually kind of fun to see what they do with just a wig and some stuff they find in their closet to make some of these yeah. characters. It's kind of fun. But for the crafters who are new and young to the scene, they're trying to churn out stuff as quickly as some of these cosplayers that get to spend their entire day at home crafting, and it's just not its not the same. Like, the balance isn't the same. No, it's not. So then they're trying to cut corners to try to keep up with these big dogs who are able to stay home and craft because it's their job. And there's that big disconnect, I think, between, you know, you see these well-known cosplayers who are able to be home and be content creators full time. And then you've got the teenager in high school who's trying to keep up at the same level. Right, with their part-time job. With their part-time job and all their schoolwork and their lack of money and their lack of time. Yep. So there's a little bit of that disconnect of what they need to do um, versus what they've been seeing. And I think another thing that people really need to remember is that everyone starts at a different place. And everyone has different sets of skills. So you, we've talked about it before, about how you and I kind of have complementary skills and how we look at a pile of fabric in different ways. Um, and you look at it as more of like the sculptural, like artistic angle. And I look at it as more of like the structural, like mathematic angle. Different kinds of garments or costumes or accessories or what have you are going to be 
better suited to different types of pattern making. So sometimes drafting, which is going to be like more mathematically based, um, they also call it flat patterning, is it's going to be drafted on like a flat surface from measurements. So you use rulers, you use curve for guidelines, you can use a straight edge, just depending on what you're doing. Um, and then after that, if you're like changing a size, they call it grading. So you, again, you're using those same shapes and measurements to change the size based off the measurements of the person that's going to be wearing it. Um, versus draping, which a lot of people are familiar with, it's usually with like flowy gowns, but... I'm I'm imagining in my head that you did a more draping with like Oogie. It's going to be, you know, taking your fabric and pinning it on a dress form or, you know, playing with it until it gets the shape that you want, which I know we did with your peplums or that you did with your peplums for um, Harley. Yeah. Similar concept. You're, you're just kind of playing with the fabric and seeing what happens. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, and same thing with like alterations versus grading you're going to be like visually going and manipulating the fabric to get it to do what you want to do as opposed to saying oh we need to you know do xyz because the math says so i cannot math yeah but different people have different skill sets and different strengths so you just kind of have to keep that in mind that not every mock-up is going to be built the same way and sometimes you can draft something like flat surface or drape it just depending on what it is and sometimes one's really going to work better than the other so not everybody's going to be great at everything so while it might take l like you know a simple drape and a couple you know quick stitches here and there to get a shape that she wants for this if she were going to try to make it on a flat surface and then alter it and then sew it and then alter it and sew it, it might take six or seven renditions to get the same product. I think I have like a combo. And I think a lot of people do to a certain extent. Yeah, I would think so. Cause like we, we know I can't math. So complete flat drafting I can't do, but a lot of times I'll take like a basic shape and I'll draw it out flat and then I'll take that shape and I'll put it onto a dress form and I'll start cutting and pinning and working from there because I cannot conceptualize it in that flat form fabric wise, how it's going to work when you put it together for mm -hmm. a 3d form. I can do it with foam for the most part and like, but not, not fabric. So like Oogie was very much a, let's get this basic shape shut, you know, cut out. And then I threw her on the dress form and was like, okay, now what do I want it to do? And Harley was very much the same way, as well as Hinoto was, okay, here's the basic shape that I know I need. Now let's throw it up here and see if it still looks right. And then I usually have to throw it on myself, too, because my dress form is not the right size. Right. Most of them aren't. No, and mine's Unless very broken. Like I need to replace it. And I just... I know. I threw mine away finally. I need to buy a new one and one of those padding kits yeah. that you can get so you can make it like vaguely the same size as you. I mean, it lived a hard life. It's 20 years old. So, I mean, it it's done its job. It was the $99 one from Joann's. I mean, oh, you definitely give it, got your money yeah, out of there. I mean, give it credit. It still works for like when I'm not doing fitted garments, it works fine for yeah. just figuring out basics and where I want things and whatnot but she's very broken from being moved too many times and i need to get a new um, one yeah but you know a lot it's a lot of me figuring out the basic shape throwing it on something see if i'm in going in the right direction taking it off recutting removing things adding in panels doing whatever it seems like i need to do to get that fit i sometimes wish i could just sit down and math it out and make it work but my brain just doesn't it doesn't work but that then way. But after you've, you know, taken this garment apart that you made out of Barbie sheets, <laughs> you know, <laughs> however many times over and over again, you know, you cut it, added pieces, sewed it together, sewed it smaller, added some more. I mean, you butcher this thing that you're holding in your hands and then you're like, okay, now I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to cut my pretty fabric out of it. Yep. I've got many compliments on those Barbie sheets. Even I feel like you've used those forever. Didn't we find another set of those at one point? And you're like, I need this for mock-ups. We may have. I'm not sure. Because <laughs> I, I got them from a friend of mine, gave me a bunch of sheets. And then I was like... I love it. 
I need mock-up fabric right now for Hinoto. We're going to use this. I mean, that's really the, the, the how and the why of the mock-up. It's, it's going to help you know exactly how much material you're going to need. It's going to prevent you from butchering those more expensive materials. I mean, you can get cheap broadcloth on a good day for like a dollar. I remember when I used to be able to get like clearance broadcloth at Walmart for like 25 cents a yard. Yep, I miss those days. I know, right? Because we used to get it for um, our the stuff we do for spells for the LARP that I did. Yeah. We made out of little squares of fabric and... So we'd always shop the after holiday clearance and like, I kid you not, my favorite one was like 25 cents and it was great. <laughs> but, I, I miss the days when you could get fabric that cheap to use for mock-ups, but I know. I mean, sometimes like we got a really good deal on two very large bolts of muslin, which is the traditional fabric to use for mock-ups. Yeah. Every once in a while I can get like our whole roll of broadcloth on sale for like $2 a yard. And I consider that to be a good day. Um, it only becomes hard when you're using like really specific fabrics, especially like a stretch, because you're going to have to do a pattern mock-up in something like a muslin and then transfer it to a fabric similar before you transfer it to your good fabric. So you can see if what you have, is even going to make sense with a stretch fabric. And I hate stretch fabric. Yes. I hate it. No. But I mean, if you... Yeah, so muslin, um, thrift store linens I know are super popular, just depending on where you live. I like I'm, sheets. If I... Sheets are really good just because they're really large rectangles of fabric. Yes. Um, I know some people that have used curtains, too, depending on if they need something with a little bit more structure to it. Or you can just use curtains as your good fabric, like I did for Harley. <laughs> yes, I've also seen that done before, just depending on what you're doing. Um, yeah. Well, and a lot of times I know for, like, armor pieces, people will use poster board, which you can get for $0.25, 50 cents at the dollar store, depending on what your market's like next to you. I've seen people use cereal boxes, the cardboard boxes that their stuff from Amazon Prime comes in. I mean, um, gift boxes left over from the holidays. There's there's lots of recyclable options when it comes to patterning for foam, which is really nice. But yeah, it's going to help you determine how much material you're actually going to need out of your good materials. It's going to prevent you from ruining your expensive materials for the alteration and take apart, put together, take apart, put together process. Yeah, you might spend a little bit more right now, but you're going to spend less in the long run by not wasting all of those super expensive fabrics. If you make a big mistake, it's going to definitely save you a lot of time because especially if you're talking about now where we're still experiencing some shipping delays. So if I have to order fabric, like we've talked about, because our Joann's pretty much only carries quilting. If I have to order fabric from a website, then I have to order more because I made a mistake with it. I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting on shipping constantly. So it's going to save you some time. And especially if you have super fussy materials, it's going to let you kind of figure out all the nuances and tricks with it beforehand. Um, especially for things like thermoplastic. You're going to want to be able to do stuff like this because sometimes when you make mistakes with those, there's no going back. Leather, another one. If you if you punch a hole in leather, it's there forever. Yeah, you're done now. Like, <laughs> it's, it's there forever. So, do we always do one? No. No. <laughs> I not mean, always. No. <laughs> I think it depends on what it is, honestly. It is. Well, and like you said, sometimes we already have, quote unquote, a mock-up ready. Um, I know like when I did all of my skirts for Kogyoku, they were all rectangles. Right. So it was just it was just math. I didn't need to do a mock-up. The only thing that I had to check was the length. Right. So, I mean, I did do some test strips for length to figure out how long I needed them to be and to see exactly what the size of the rectangle I needed was. But I didn't have to do one for that. If you 
fit a commercial pattern that you've used before really well, or if you've altered it like we've done with the Yaya Han Overbus corset for Elf. I mean, you don't necessarily have to reinvent that wheel every single time. Save it. <laughs> Although I think we should mention what inspired this episode to begin with, because the Facebook post that we saw that inspired this still cracks me up. Oh, yes. Because yes. this post was as follows. I spent $500 on foam for my first armor cosplay. How do I make it less expensive? I am not doing a mock-up. It limits my creativity. Thanks. Which when you were talking about all the cheap ways to get things for a mock-up for armor, I was like hearing this in my head cracking up. I know, right? <laughs> Like, because I this could... person continued to argue with, like, long-standing cosplayers about how you have to do a mock-up for armor. And they were like, no, I just want to, like, cut into it and let the artistic flow happen. And I'm like, that's not going to work. Well, and, like, yeah, if you get, like, the super tiny, if you get, like, the two millimeter or less stuff at the, like, craft store that comes in, like, the nine by 12 sheets or whatever, it's not super expensive. But obviously, that's not big enough to make any actual armor piece out of. So, like, they're spending $500 of foam. I'm thinking all of this, like, really heavy-duty, nice foam that I think they got it at, like, Hobby Lobby or Michael's, where there's a hell of a markup on it anyway. It's a lot more expensive than if you buy it directly from some of these manufacturers like you can. And I'm just like, Ugh, why? All that poor foam. <laughs> All that poor foam. Because well, you're well, just, just you can't just like foam even more than fabric. You can't just jump in and start cutting things and hope that it comes out right. Like sometimes with fabric you can. Sometimes with fabric you can. Well, in like thermoplastic, if you depending on the thermoplastic, sometimes if you royally mess it up, you can just melt it back down and get it pliable again. And I've seen people use their scrap to make new sheets depending yes. on what they're but depending on what they're doing. So plastic's fairly forgiving in that way in that you can like take it down and then reconstitute it but like foam no mm -mm. unless you're like tearing it apart and gluing it back together in which case you're gonna have a bunch of seams right that you're gonna have to fill and hope you get adhered properly and then try to hide like <laughs> you can't just cut it and go with it i mean i will admit chunks of oogie were very much uh i'm just gonna cut this and hope it works but, but you're, you're, it's a sack. You're wearing a she, sack. Well, and she's extremely distressed anyway. So if there's a mistake, it doesn't matter because this fabric has to be, has needed to be so heavily distressed that it wouldn't really matter anyway because it would just go with everything else that's happening to the fabric. I've got a couple of costumes on my list that have been on the list forever, and I'd really like to try to like get started on one of those in the next couple of months and just like jump into it because I feel like I've been making excuses as to why I've been putting them off for various reasons. So one of them is super sewing heavy and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm comfortable with. But one of them is almost entirely armor based, which I'm not 100% comfortable with, but I'm really excited about the challenge for. But you can guarantee that I'm going to be making mock-ups out of random shit around my house. Like <laughs> I am not wasting foam or plastic, or leather, or what have you. Like, I don't like throwing money away. And I feel like if I were to jump straight into an armor project without making a pattern first, and just trying to wing it <laughs> for my creativity, like, please, it's like, me throwing money at Amazon Prime is completely different than throwing it in the trash. Yes, <laughs> like, that's those very are... true. <laughs> I, I mean, I will Amazon Prime things all day long because... I enjoy it, but I am not going to just like buy a bunch of materials so that I can destroy them and throw them away for no reason other than like my ego. Well, because the only way you're going to get a halfway decent fit is if you do a mock-up first. Right. Like, it doesn't matter if it's fabric or foam or what have you, like in order to figure out whether or not this item's going to fit, you need some kind of mock-up to have a general idea of whether or not this shape is going to do what you want it to do. Like, and even if you buy a commercial pattern, unless you happen to be the exact size 
of person needed to fit this exact pattern that this one particular pattern maker happened to make on this one particular day like you're not gonna, you can't use it like straight out of the get-go that's a big misconception with um commercial patterns and you'll see this question asked a lot on like contest forums as to whether or not you're allowed to use a commercial pattern people don't realize that you legit cannot straight make your costume from a commercial pattern it's not possible i mean you can it's just it's not going to be perfectly fitted to your body it's closer to possible if the commercial pattern is for the costume you are working on but if you're using a commercial pattern as a base to create a cosplay and it is not like you're making zelda but you're not using the zelda pattern from xyz company like, you're going to have to do so many things to these patterns. Yeah. Like, it's fine to use a commercial pattern. Now, what gets confusing is, let's say you're neck and neck with someone, and your quality and their quality are exactly the same, but they hand-drafted all their patterns, then they're going to get the one up. But... It has to be exactly the same quality. So if someone who used some commercial patterns as a stepping stone to creating their cosplay has higher quality than the person who did not and tried to hand draft their patterns, the person with the higher quality is going to be the one that wins. Nine times out of ten. Because it is based off of quality, not how hard you worked. But that's a whole nother episode. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right yeah. about extra We've... points <laughs> and yeah. working hard yeah well because people do think a lot of times in relationships to contests that if they come up and they're like i didn't do a mock-up that somehow like we're going to be really impressed by this as judges and we're just going to look at you at you like you're an idiot for not doing one <laughs> or we're going to be able to tell that you didn't do one you can you can usually tell yeah, if you if you tell me that you, if you are, especially if you're in like a, a newer class, like a novice class, and you're like, well, I didn't use a mock-up, and you're like, congratulations, like, okay, like that's, that's nice. It's not impressive to us if you come up to us and you're like, I didn't use a mock-up for this costume, and we've gotten that a lot, and it is typically in novice categories that people will come up and be like, I didn't do a mock-up, you know? And in the back of my head, I'm like, I can tell you didn't do a mock-up because this seems not in the right place and this doesn't fit. And, you know, I'm not going to say that to them, obviously, but, like, you typically can physically tell when someone did not do a mock-up. Like, skipping skipping the mock-up process is not impressive from a judge's perspective if your overall quality is not there. I mean, they're... Professionals use them all the time. Professionals do fittings. Professionals make blocks to use as templates for. But I mean, even if you buy a commercial pattern, are are you going to be the exact same height that this was intended for? Like, I would really be curious to know how many of you out there have purchased a commercial pattern and looked at the measurements on the back for height, bust, hips, waist. And every single one of those measurements, you hit the exact same size for. Because if you didn't, you're already having to make modifications. I mean, and where your waist is compared to where their model was or where the waist is on their dress form. Like, if your waist is not, you could be the same height as somebody, but have a different ratio for your height as far as where your waist sits. That's all stuff you're going to have to change. Altering patterns or utilizing mock-ups are a smart, professional way to make garments, including costumes. Like we mentioned earlier, you can save those and use them over and over and over and over again, which is amazing. You saved yourself so much time. (laughs) I just saw the KDA Evelyn that Kenpatsu is currently working on. Jacket. Pieces of that were totally taken from another costume. She said so right in her post. Save those. I mean, you will just save yourself the the headache (laughs) and your garments will fit beautifully. Soapbox. 
It's there. I know. <laughs> I, I know. I know. It's always a hard one to get across. I know. It, in the end, it's, really, it's like... It's important. And I feel like sometimes we shout in the void, but it is what it is. <laughs> I do think that there are some things that are really important that people don't think about, um, like, like the fit. Like, we discovered early on that none of the pants patterns fit you, so we have to make toddler pants. Yes. But if we didn't play around with fabrics and pants for you, we wouldn't have known that. We would have just, like, constantly fought with pants for the past eight years. Right. Well, because we also (laughs) found that if we get a male pant pattern, that actually works better for me in most cases anyway. Right, because of your waist-to-hip ratio. Right. So, but we wouldn't know that if we hadn't played around with fit and yeah we do the toddler pants because my weight fluctuates so much that i need to have adjustable waists so that my stuff fits me because that's just a thing we wouldn't have figured out the bust issues on my corset pattern if we hadn't done multiple mock-ups well and i wouldn't have figured out just how terrible um nahalinia's bust pattern was and then completely changed it just for the simple fact that that's a terrible shape on my body. I wouldn't have known that that was a terrible shape on my body if I would have just made the costume like it is on screen. Right. Until I put it on and it was too late. I just feel <laughs> like then- mock-ups save you from a lot of that fighting with your fabric. Yep. Because otherwise you just keep trying to make adjustments to the good fabric because you don't want to waste it instead of just having done that to begin with was something that you could possibly throw away if you needed to. Right. Or a fabric that you don't particularly care about. Right. Like these sheets that I have that I want to just, you know, donate to the thrift store. Like, or I could cut them up into a skirt and, you know. Right. Use them for that instead. (laughs) Well, and it's also really nice, too, because if you're shopping, like, clearance bins. Right. You can get super cheap stuff. And it can be, like, the most... It can be the ugliest effing skirt you've ever seen. That's right. It can be. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. So choose to mock up so you can save yourself the headache and the time and the money. About saving money. Especially yes, when it comes to cosplay. Too. Well, because... we have a terrible habit of buying very expensive fabric. Well, and the other thing, too, like... So I can save time on cosplay by buying pieces for my cosplay. Because like we've established previously, if you're not competing in it, it doesn't matter. Like, if you want to make it, make it. If you want to just buy it and wear it, just do that. But as far as money goes, if I waste money on material, that's less money in my cosplay budget to spend on more cosplay or more materials. Right. Work work smart, not hard. That's right. That is the end of... That's really the, like moral of this story is work smart not hard yes and i i enjoy how our entire like tangent in this one was like a soapbox yes (laughs) yes our executive producer has some opinions he does yes he is giving me disgruntled looks at the moment Uh, he's ready for (laughs) mom's attention hi do you have anything to say about the quality of this episode Really? Oh, really? Yes. Do we need to re-record it again out of better fabric? Out of better fabric. <laughs> do we need to make a mock-up of our episode? A mock-up of our I episode. Mean, we kind of do, though. Because, like, I know. we record... Well, first we, we write out our outline, and then we record our episode, but then I go back in and I edit, and then we get the final product. So we do make a mock-up of our episodes. We... We make at least two, sometimes three, before we get the final product. And we won't talk about that one time. We had to re-record the first episode like three or four times. Um, It was at least three or four times. <laughs> I know. At least. At least. <laughs> at least yeah. three or four times. He wants, he wants the pop filter. He does want the pop filter. That was before you were here to do quality control, that's, little man. That's baby's pop filter now. He's like, I own this. Executive producer says we're done now, so I guess we should be done. Yes, the executive producer is here with me. I am Ash. <laughs> I'm Al. We are Love You Cosplay. And this is Shit Cosplayers Say. Work smart, not hard. You've been listening to Shit Cosplayers Say, an LVC production. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcast SCS. Our website is lavicosplay.com. 
Have a fun, crazy con or cosplay-related story? Absurd cosplay question? Or just something in general to share with us? Email us at podcastscs at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should.